Welcome back everybody. Yes, here we are once again. It's another edition of New Guitar Day. Today is March the 28th, 2024. A beautiful early spring day. It's about 10 minutes to 5, a rather late UPS delivery. So, this is called delayed gratification. We're going to begin by telling you what this is. This is a Squire Sonic Bronco Bass. I have some comments about that, but before we start, I have some suspicions. And I'm just a suspicious guy, but I want you to note the tape on the box. Now, my experience in my many, 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 many purchases of new guitars is that a new guitar comes in a factory sealed box and that includes staples. Now it's possible that things are changing but I just get suspicious when I see tape. Tape tells me that the box has been opened so we're just going to see. Yeah. No, actually there's no staples on the box so I guess my suspicions are misplaced. Because if there's no staples, then there couldn't have ever been staples. There's no holes for staples, so you'll notice that usually they put the truss rod wrench there, and it's not. Maybe it's in this one, and yes it is. The accoutrement. So, I'm just going to pop this pop out, take a look. Feels like it's a reasonable weight. After all, it is a Bronco. The shipping weight, I think, was nine pounds. So we'll consider that to be reasonable. And I guess I'm pretty confident that I am actually getting a brand new guitar. I'm going to weigh this real quick just because I like to weigh my guitars. The hang tags are hanging. Guitar is pretty cool, but again, it was fairly warm outside today, so I'm pretty confident that uh, we were okay. Uh, it looks like there's some mush on the pick guard. I'm not going to select the small details and see what the serial number is. It is a made in Indonesia model, which I was hoping for. Nothing against the Chinese, but for some reason I have better luck with the, the made in Indonesia models. So, I'm going to weigh this and I'll be right back. Well, according to the scale, it says it's 8.2 pounds, which I find very interesting because I, a week ago, bought a Squire Sonic P base and it says it's 8 pounds, so this weighs 2 ounces more. Just based on what I'm looking at, the action looks it doesn't look that bad. Anyways, we're going to go plug it in because that's really going to tell the tale. So we'll be. Okay, we're back. I tuned this up, stretched the strings once, played it for a half hour, and I have to say that I'm very, very impressed. And I understand a lot of people like to buy this model for the modification program. At this point in time, I see nothing that I want to modify on this at all. Everything's working, the fit and the finish. There's a bit of a gap on this side of the neck pocket, but that probably means the likelihood of a neck pocket crack go way down. The satin finish feels really good. The piece of uh, maple that they use for the neck is Again, I'm sure it's inexpensive, but it doesn't look trashy looking. Um, the color of the guitar, the Arctic, even though no one says Arctic, they say Arctic, um, white. Like looking at the camera right now, it looks whiter than it does actually in person. Depending on the color on this, there must be just a little bit of color in the white because it actually looks like a very light faded Olympic white, like there's just a touch of yellow in there. And you see the difference most notably with the pit guard 
which is absolutely pure white. Although again, looking through the camera, they both look very close to each other. But in person, there's a definite shade difference between the pick guard and the guitar itself. So there is a bit of a shading. The setup on this guitar is incredibly nice. Believe it or not, the action may be a little bit low for my taste. Um, I don't get any single coil hum from this pickup, although I'm playing at fairly low living room volumes, but that's what I'm going to be using this for. Maybe it's stage volume, which is something that's way behind me in my rear view mirror. So for what I'm using it for, they've got the pickup jacked up pretty high. Most people will say that's the weak spot. I owned another Bronco, um, an Affinity Bronco, a few years back. I didn't like it. I ended up selling it. Um, the neck profile on this is the slimmer, and I love it. You know, 1.5 at the nut is the perfect fit for me. Just really nice. Um, the one thing I have to laugh at, again, I didn't really notice or think about it. There's no contour on this. This is a slab body. And, of course, if you think about it, that makes total sense because this was their budget guitar back in the day. Back in the day when people actually held the piece of wood and cut it with a bandsaw and had to put all the contours on by hand. And, obviously, the budget model was just going to be a straight piece of wood. Um, and it's very comfortable. But, you know, compared to a P-Base, where they put a little more work into it and they put the, the contour right here, and they put the rib or the belly cut, as people like to call it right here. This is just a slab. But very comfortable. And again, I'm going to weigh them again, but I'm really surprised that this is actually two ounces more than the P-Base. Um, but it very well may be. But anyways, in the eight-pound range for a base, very comfortable. So no complaints. So again, I'll be back in a day or two with some more comments. I'm pretty confident this was a brand new bass. There is some scuffing on the pick guard here, but other people have mentioned that, so it's either happening in the factory. Um, but yeah, just based on everything I can tell, although I am surprised that they're not stapling their boxes, that really does open up the possibilities that someone could get in there, get their hands on it and put it back in and there'd be no way of proving it because if there's not staples you can't complain that none of the staples were popped. So again, March the 28th, 2024, Squire Sonic Series Bronco Base. Again, the two upgrades, the tuners and the four saddle bridge. Nice. And again, maybe they did do something. They said that they voiced this, re changed the voicing, whatever that means. People have already pulled these apart. It's a ceramic pickup. It is the guitar pickup that was in the original, the six pole pieces. But I have to say, it sounds pretty darn nice. It's got some nice thump on the low end. There's a really, really nice, gentle guy on YouTube who's been taking the Bronco through its paces patiently trying this pickup and that pickup and just demonstrating the differences. And I was going to write a comment to him, but I didn't want to discourage him because he's so generous of his time to do all these mods and just sort of show people because people have different ears and they hear different things. But the thing that I would point out is that unless you're just doing solo bass, most of the time the bass is going to be fairly buried in the mix, even if it's present you're not going to hear all the subtleties. You're not going to hear all the overtones. and the. You just aren't. And that's true with a lot of things. You know, if you, if you go through a multi-track recording and you isolate things, sometimes it's surprising how not good something sounds by itself. And then you pull in the rest of the instruments and everything just sort of, that's where the magic happens. And I just, at the moment, and things could change, can't see any reason why I would ever change this pickup or the potentiometers. The output jack feels firm. That probably won't last forever. The tuners feel good. It, it's really, it's a nice budget base. And it's funny too how the, because I have a yellow awning out here, so I'm getting sort of yellow light cast. Of course, the uh, neck and the fretboard are very pale, but with that yellow filtered light coming in, it sort of gives it a much warmer. But as everyone points out over time, even with the finish on it, maple will start to yellow out. 
And again, those things don't really matter. I'm a guitar nerd like everyone else, but the truth is most of the stuff that guitar nerds spread about doesn't matter. If it plays good and it sounds good, close your eyes. Anyways, I'll be back in a couple days with uh, a little more insight and detail. Thank you for joining me. Again, Squire Sonic Bronco Bass. This is the 30-inch scale, a short scale bass. Very nice. Welcome back, everybody. It is now Sunday afternoon. It's March the 31st, 2024. This came in, as you know, from earlier in the video on Thursday, so I got to play it on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I think that's enough time for me to give my final analysis and impressions. Again, this is the Squire Sonic Bronco Bass 30-inch scale. And I have to say that overall I'm very, very, very impressed with this. Um, I'm sure I'm going to repeat a few things because the last time we spoke it was on Friday or maybe on Thursday. And, you know, I've had some time to think, but the, the point that I wanted to make is that the fit, the finish, the build quality, the only issue I have, and it's incredibly minor, is there's a bit of a gap on the upper side between the neck and the body, but that could pay dividends in later years, because as people always say, they want that perfectly tight fit between the neck and the body, and then they get those dreaded neck pocket cracks. And they wonder why, and of course, that's what happens. And again, this guitar may or may not have been in a dry environment. The neck may swell a little. The fret ends on this guitar were nicely finished. Um, again, I could have taken this guitar out of the box, tuned it up, and played it on stage the night I got it. The intonation is spot on. The strings are a little bright for my taste, but new bass strings are always bright. So with a little bit of time and a little bit of grime, they'll start getting a little more thuddy. Um, the tuners work absolutely fine. The cut of the nut is absolutely fine. The, the height, the depth, there's no binding. The potentiometers work good. Uh, one of the things that surprised me, I had an older version of this a few years back, the Affinity Bronco. And I thought that the pickup was pretty anemic, which is one of the common comments or complaints about this. I don't know if they beefed up this pickup. Um, they, they say that they voiced it at Fender, whatever that means. Um, it's pretty high, and maybe I didn't pay attention to what the, the height adjustment, the action's nice and low on this, the strings, but the pickup height is pretty high. And this has nice volume, nice roar. Um, and I have absolutely no single coil hum, although I am playing at lower volumes. If I were to be playing at the stage volume, which I never will, there might be a more apparent, or if there was something more likely to cause interference. This house is 107 years old, so if there's anything that's going to cause shielding issues, it certainly would likely be this house. Something else that's interesting about this, and also the other recent purchase, the Squire Sonic Precision Bass is most, if not all, of the pictures that were probably originally provided by Fender show these as being one-piece maple necks with a skunk stripe on the back. But both of these versions have a two-piece, which it's funny that people have sort of an aversion to that, and yet they buy rosewood fingerboards all the time, which are two-piece. It's a slab put on top of a maple neck, so I don't see what difference it makes. It looks nice. It feels good. Um, you can see the glimmer. The frets are just polished to an absolute shine. I mean, you can see them just beaming off of the light. Again, that doesn't really matter to me. I would say the same is true on the Sonic P-Base. Um, you know, you pay a little more for a name brand, and even though these are the bottom of the, the barrel for Squire, the Sonic is the lowest tier, with the bullet now being pushed out of the way. One of the things you pay for, which most of the time you get, is quality control. Usually when they send these out, it's been gone over by somebody who did a last-minute adjustment and check, and I can tell you from buying that uh, uh, Glary base that I got last week, 
it had some major issues that if there would have been a quality control person checking it, it wouldn't have gone out the door. That being said, the other interesting thing that I had forgotten about the Bronco is it's a slab body. There is no contour here and there is no belly contour. It's just a straight flat body, which makes sense when you think about it because I think this was based on a Music Master. I don't know if the Music Master was a guitar and then they just came out with the Bronco with the same body, but you know, back in the day when they were making these by hand, someone was sitting there with a bandsaw grinding these things out and of course with a Stratocaster or any other guitar that has the contours that's going to be a lot more work. So for the budget minded this is just like a Telecaster just a straight flat piece of wood. Nice rounding on the edges and again it's very comfortable to play. I just had forgotten that that was one of the the uh, characteristics of the Bronco bass. Whereas if you go over to the Precision bass it has the contour on the top and the belly cut or rib cut as they call it. Anyways, very satisfied with this. I am going to weigh them again. I am surprised that again the precision base came in at 8 pounds and this came in at 8.2. Maybe that's the lack of contours. Maybe when you shave off the contours you take uh, 2 ounces off. I don't know. But overall very satisfied and I was pleased. Again, this video doesn't really show it. Um, the Arctic, which again, no one says Arctic, they say Arctic, or at least most people do. White isn't a pure, pure white. As you can tell, there is a slight bit of contrast between the truly pure white pick guard and the base. The base does have a hint of toner in it of some kind um, that brings it into sort of like a very, very, very light faded version of Olympic white which happens to be one of my favorite fender colors because it has that cream. And this has just a slight, slight bit of that cream. Anyways, very pleased with this. It, it's a good deal if you're looking for this kind of guitar. And like I say, I don't know if my particular guitar speaks for everybody, but I have no intention of doing any mods at all. I mean, basically reading all the forums, it's almost like just automatic that you replace the pickup because the pickup's horrible. And again, it, you nice output all the way through all the strings. The low E string on a shorter scale bass is always a little flabbier because of the the loss of tension because of the shorter scale. But this has a good thump on the E string. You notice a bit more thump on the P bass. And then of course on the mini bass, you have to really use your imagination because the 28 point whatever scale the low E string is the one that suffers the most for lack of tension. But look, if you're sitting at home and you're having fun and you're enjoying yourself, uh, you know, there's no reason for you to have the top of the line equipment unless, of course, you've got the money and that's what floats your boat. Because one of the older sayings in my mind is the best guitar you'll ever own is the guitar that makes you want to play. Because practice is what will make you better. The guitar itself will never make you better. Other than the fact that if it makes you want to play more, then you'll get better. So that's the reason to buy a better guitar. And the only reason. If it makes you want to play more, then it has more value. So anyways, thank you for joining me. I do have another odd guitar coming. I'm not going to tease it. It's coming on Tuesday, supposedly. And uh, yeah, I bought it because it's a little bit different than anything I have and I'm trying to go down that path now. I've pretty much tried almost everything. I don't think I'm going to veer into <coughs> Firebird and, you know, odd body shapes. I'm pretty much pretty conventional when it comes to the body shapes. And I've gotten some really, really nice guitars and I've sold quite a few of them because they just weren't at the top of the list. And I have discovered that selling guitars brings me as much, if not sometimes more pleasure when someone shows up and I've got a guitar that they've been really looking for and they really want it and they feel like the price is fair and they like the condition. Man, the look on their face, you know, they leave just really happy and I hope that they are happy, continue. I've never had anyone contact me and say, oh, the guitar is a piece of junk. I try to be very upfront and honest. If there's a flaw in the guitar, I try to point it out to people and let them make a decision based on that. But for the most part, 
I take good care of my guitars. At least I try to. And so, there you go. So, for the final time, it is the final day of March, March the 31st, 2024. It's Easter Sunday. Resurrect, rise, everybody. Keep your faith alive. See you next time. Bye-bye.